Howdy. So I'm just uh, here today with my Lego guitar. Um, it is one that I built, so I just decided, uh, since I kind of show my guitar builds on my channel, I would show this one. Um, when I was about 15, 16, somewhere in that age range, I had a J Terser SG, and I had a, just a ton of Legos, um, and I was to that age, I was kind of growing out of just your typical playing with Legos. So I wanted to make a Lego guitar just for fun, mostly as like a video prop. And it was going to be all Legos, Lego body, Lego neck. Yeah, I was going to build pickups and knobs out of Legos. Not functional, of course, just Legos. So I traced my SG out on my table. And I essentially built an SG body inside of that little... Uh, drawing that I drew on the desk. I used pencil and I just drew right on the um, surface of the desk. By the time I finished the body, I kind of started thinking that it would be cool if it was a real guitar. Um, I didn't know how exactly I was going to do it because I knew that I could buy a neck. In fact, I probably um, I had a Strat as well at the time. I had an SGN a Strat. Um, Clearly, I took the design from the SG. It's the one that I traced onto the table. But uh, I could have borrowed my Strat neck or whatever if I wanted to. Um, when I started researching how to do that, um, that was when I learned a little bit more about actual physics and things and realized that if I just bolted a neck to a Lego body and tried to use a Strat bridge or something in the body, that the string tension was going to snap the body. So I started thinking about ways I could enforce it, maybe with reinforce it, maybe some plywood or whatever. And then I thought, what if I just got a section of a guitar and and put it right in the middle? So I went to a pawn shop and I was looking for a guitar, just a really cheap guitar. Basically, I could cut right down the middle, build around it. Um, and the pawn shop owner told me about these travel guitars that were significantly smaller and easier to modify. So I did end up, I, I purchased a travel guitar, um, and the travel guitar essentially gave me enough wood from headstock to bridge. And the really convenient part was that the bridge just goes right on the end of the piece of wood. So it would have been really ugly to have wood go all the way out to here with a bridge and strings through, whatever. And what I had had been a pain to try and build around that. With this one, it was pretty easy. All I had to do was rip out all the electronics, um, just cut out a little hole in the middle of my body. And that's what I ended up doing. I just, here, I'll show you on the back. I just cut a hole out, and then I made a little neck plate for it. Um, yeah, and so far it's... It's been really incredible. It's, uh, I mean, it's been 12 years and it's still holding up. Um, this pot is not what the guitar came with. So this is a multi-level pot. A lot of travel guitars do come with this. Um, so this top half is the tone. The top half is the tone. Bottom half is the volume. Um, and I didn't put any switches. Um, it only has one pickup. I didn't want to route as much through the body as I didn't have to. So originally the knob was probably somewhere around here. I did use the original pickup hole that ended up fitting where the guitar was. I routed out the knob to over here. So I just made a little cutout in the, in the wood there so I could run the pickup to the knob. And then I routed the uh, jack through the body. I actually had this all covered. I, I lost a Lego at some point along the way. I was going to cover it, and then I kind of thought it was cool to have the wire showing through. So originally, oh, you won't be able to see it. Originally, the jack was on the back of the guitar, um, but you know, I completely rewired the whole guitar, really, and the. I don't remember what the name of the company is that built this kind of travel guitar. They're out of business because 
their build quality kind of sucks. So I had to redo all their work. Luckily, I was able to get the neck straight, polish the frets and fret ends, and I kind of I got the bridge in tune, as you'll see. So mostly that's that's the video. Total cost was uh, pretty cheap. The whole travel guitar that came with most of the electronics I needed was one hundred twenty dollars, and then the Legos. Who knows? <laughs> it was Legos I'd accumulated throughout my lifetime, so I didn't have to spend any extra money on. So yeah, pr pretty good budget build. The tuners surprisingly work well. They tune well. They keep the guitar in tune. Um, so yeah, let's let you hear it. So I went for the P90 because it, with my knowledge of electronics and guitars when I was 15, 16, whatever, um, I figured a P90 would give me the most versatility since I was only going to have one pickup. I didn't want to use a humbucker because I wanted to get some of these nice, really crisp, clean, light, spanky cleans. <laughs> a tone that you can't get as easily with humbuckers but I wanted to still be able to get some crunch when I wanted so it's a P90 there's a little feedback when you got your crunch but it's it's good and crunchy <laughs> It's been in various stages of disrepair throughout my life. Right now, it's the best it's ever been. None of the electronics crackle. The neck is straight. The action is good. It stays in tune. I actually played this in a show recently. And while it's probably not my best feeling or sounding or versatile guitar, uh, it was a crowd pleaser. People just, they think it's really cool. So they don't notice if you are messing up or playing a little bit or if you don't sound as cool as you could. You just look awesome with a guitar made out of Legos. Easy enough to build. I, uh, back when I was 15, 16, I couldn't find any other functioning Lego guitars on the internet. I'm sure by now there's millions of them out there. So I don't feel the need to be exclusive. Go out, make your own. It's cheap, it's easy, it looks cool. You can get it to sound good. Um, and people dig it, it shows. <laughs>